It's once again time for my all-time favorite holiday, Halloween. So I decided to get into the spirit of things by preparing a little Halloween treat for all of you. That's right, I rented my all-time favorite Halloween movie, Hocus Pocus. It's got everything. Witchcraft, zombies, Kaki Najimi flying on a vacuum cleaner, Sarah Jessica Parker before everyone started making horse jokes about her. And since I already plan to watch it about 12 times today, I may as well do one of my infamous recap videos while I'm at it. I'm excited, you guys! So excited that I didn't even bother looking at the DVD label. So, let's jump right in and enjoy that iconic opening credits flyover, because it's time to review Hocus Pocus. Is this seriously happening right now? Okay, so due to a terrible mix-up that the fine people at Blockbuster will most certainly be hearing about, it appears that instead I'm going to be reviewing Twink Light. Yes, Twink Light, that memorable homage to the works of Stephanie Meyer that can best be summarized in three simple but resonant words. Billa, you, guys. Here's a brief primer for those who aren't hip to the lingo, or still need to catch up on the rest of my videos. A twink is pretty much a young, skinny, usually hairless gay dude. So Twink Light is naturally the gay porn version of Twilight, with only a tiny bit less plot and about 900% more f***ing. Hi mom! And since there's seriously only a sliver of this thing that I can accurately describe to you without choking on a sensor bar, I'll be replacing all of the sex scenes with scenes of the characters behaving like responsible and productive members of society, and employing the use of stick figures, which I feel are especially appropriate considering the body type of the actors. So, let's get this over with. Our very first scene is of our main character Billa and some other guy balancing their checkbooks after which Billa sits in the fetal position and cries in the shower. Wow, this might be the most self-aware porno ever made. Leaving behind a note for his mother, who is totally not a PA wearing a wig, Billa hitchhikes his way to his friend Bailey's house. The two of them visit a gay dance club, where they attract the attention of some vampires, who are not super subtle about being vampires. <sighs> When are people going to learn that human beings hissing is just not very intimidating? <sighs> then there's a totally unrelated scene with two random nameless characters renewing their driver's licenses, and then biting the shit out of each other. Billa and his new vampire friend Edmund visit a local coffee shop and engage in some awkward small talk. You know, I'm beginning to suspect that compelling dialogue might not have been this director's first priority. Meanwhile, Bailey and Random Vampire No. 3 discuss the merits of capitalism while covered in candle wax. From there we jump right into another random scene with two characters we've never seen before and will never see again. One of them is missing his dog and the other we'll call Mr. Cool Vest. And despite some unfortunate implications, What'd you do to my dog? They pretty much launch directly into applying to junior college. Billa and Bailey have shirtless friendship time, where they share their respective encounters. And then Billa has a dream sequence about Edmund, where he organizes his closet. And it's once again time for a random, pointless vignette. This one's about a guy chained up against his will, who seems only sort of concerned about it. Look, I don't know what's going on, but you need to get these chains off of me right now. Seriously, guy, this kidnapping is so lame. Billa and Edmund frolic through the woods, while Bailey gets his shoulder sucked on. There's not even a sex scene here, it's just like a full minute of weird, bloody shoulder biting. Hot. Bailey shows up at the club covered in bite marks and passes out from blood loss. Bailey, help, someone help. Stop. Shh. Please, help, someone. Oh my god, help. My best friend is dying. Ah, No, really, I'm pretty sure he straight up dies, and they just leave. Hot. And with absolutely zero context, we jump straight into a threesome scene. I mean, a studying for final exams threesome scene. Seriously, this thing has more dangling plot threads than season two of Heroes. Edmund mind melds with Billa and shows him how he became a vampire and accidentally killed his boyfriend. 
Much like in the source material, Billa is basically totally okay with this. And the two of them... floss. For like a full half hour. The end. What do you want me to say here? It's not like I can sit here and critique this thing with a straight face. It's twink light. It was never meant to be good. This movie was made exclusively for people turned on by skinny white guys covered in blood. And if that's what you're into, then more power to you. As for me, I think I'll stick with Hocus Pocus.